revolution is happening and it's happening right in front of your eyes and it's about time each and every African needs to get involved to see Africans converting raw materials into a finished product. It's something that we all need to talk about. You guys are changing the narrative. The narrative of Africans always exporting raw materials to the West for them to turn it into a finished good and send back. it back to us for us to buy. That's the kind of revolution we are putting up here. So um, we are just harnessing the energy and the potentials of Africa to produce world-class products and put it out there. And, and that's what we're doing. And once again, it's done by Africans. Sure, sure. Full Africans. It means Africans are capable. We are more than capable. And we have shown that uh, by our project, looking at the, the total value chain, looking at um, us going, moving from land preparation all the way to that box of juice that you see on the shelf in Walmart. It comes from us. That's incredible. If you really want to have a taste of this natural juice from Ghana, check the link in the description. And trust me, your support will go a very, very long way. I believe that many Africans, especially Ghanaians, will testify that a Kunfi story is a success story. It is. It is. And what I believe they don't know is how the dream began. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you. Yeah. This is a, it's a dream that has taken, um, give and take, 25 years. 25 years? Yeah, so. Wait some... a minute. <laughs> how, how old is this factory? This factory has been here since 20. We started the construction. Uh, 2018 and we finished and began uh, processing December of 2019 so wow. we've been here since 2019 December and the journey began 25 yeah, years ago way back ago. in 1998 uh, we used to have this conversation about um, adding value to uh, the produce from Ghana you and who <laughs> where exactly right so so two of us okay. um, had this vision to to process and that was that was uh, the 1998 dream. We started chasing it, but we had just come out of the university. It actually started on the campus of the University of Cape Coast. We're, hmm. in we're both vacuum haulers, and you know, vacuum carries the, the, the tag um, industrialist. So we were thinking in, the, in that sense, hmm. and we've been, we've been through to now. Along the line, we've been doing other things. We've been doing a lot of things. We've been doing some consultancy, we've been doing a little bit of food processing, etc. Until we got here. And, we and along the line, people. I know from what I read about you, you used to be a teacher. You used to be a teacher. Yeah, so I'm actually um, a teacher from the University of Cape Coast. But, um, oh, wow. but out, out from the university, I had done a lot more outside teaching. And uh, I find myself here. You now I'm doing a little bit of civil engineering, I'm doing food technology, <laughs> I'm doing agri and agronomy, agri business, and, and, and all of that. Um, I would love to see the factory. Would you take me there? Sure, most welcome. Let's go to see what, <laughs> what happens in the factory. It, it, it's more like farm to factory. Sure, sure. <laughs> because that is what happens from, yeah. um, from planting mm. to, to maturity to day of harvest. That is today. And this process of harvesting triggers a process, processing. So from here, it moves straight to the factory. Because in the factory, we don't store anything. It comes directly from the farm, straight into the pool, and production begins. I don't think I'll ever stop clapping for you guys for what you people are doing in this country. Wow, wow. that's a huge factory. Yeah, so welcome to the to the Kumfi Fruits and Juices factory. Thank you. Inside this uh, magnificent building sits the production of the best, the premium best, non-genetically modified juice. You saw the production. I saw so that's it. what we do here. We produce from zero GMO, zero fertilizer. We use the organic fertilizer that we produce here. From our waste, we turn them into compost and take it back there to grow 
our pineapples and then inside here sits our processing machine let's have a look i'm excited i just want to see it can, can i can i see all the process sure i'll take you through the process i'll walk you through the process Right, so Woody, welcome Thank to you. Our, our processing. Thank you. So today I'm going to take you through the processing of pineapple and watermelon. Wow. With a taste of ginger, which you'll see inside there. So once they arrive, they arrive like these from the farms after the harvest that we, we, saw. we, we took part in. Yeah. So they arrive here and straight away they come into this pool. So That's this it. pool, yes. So this pool does three things. First of all, is to clean it, obviously. This has been exposed to the weather all its life. So it comes through cleaning before we go. The pineapples are supposed to be whole. The watermelons are supposed to be whole. Now if they are broken for any reason, by not by us, by, by any external factor, once they come into the pool, they will go down, they will sink. Okay. So we call them sinkers. It is not good for processing. We're gonna follow the process, so come along with us. Let's go. Sure, sure, welcome. Thank you. Right, so it is likely a pineapple, which is not too good, might get protection from the others and will not sink till it gets here and up here. Yeah. So on this line, we have the human beings, we call this the inspection table, to now look through and then pick the ones that have escaped from the farm, escaped in the water and are and here. Fine so from here comes the washing. The washing and cleaning happens here. This machine contains brushes and has water to do all the washing. Wow. Because of the nature of our processing, we do not peel the pineapples. The machine does it. So we have to keep the pineapples and then the watermelon and whatever we process here as clean as possible. Mm. But, so this is the machine that does it. From here, it goes up there. So these are watermelons that have just arrived for processing. So these are whole ones. These are the ones that have, have the incision. Yes. So there's the incision done so that the processing will be easier, yeah. right? But they will all go into the extractor for the juice to be extracted. So they take their last bath and they are off into the hopper. They drop into the hopper and there's a mechanism here to separate the peels from the pulp. So the peels come down here and are taken down there for, for um, waste control while the pop is sent into this roto machine for a pressing. Okay. Okay. From this machine, it goes into the last machine, which is a roto finisher. So you have three points of juice. The first point where there's the first extraction between the, the pop and then the peel, juice will come out. So that takes the first pipe. In the roto presser, yeah. there is another level of squeezing. So it takes and juice will come from this point. And then there's this roto finisher, which is the last point. So as you look up here, you see three pipes going into the factory. Okay. And they are all carrying juice. Is that not the juice? No. So so after the ginger extraction, we drop them here. So the ginger has been milled. So we mill the ginger and drop them here. Wow. So this is the, the onward processing. So the three pipes carrying the juice now enter into the process. So these are the three lines coming in. Wow. Okay. They are received in the tank one, which has the intelligence system to communicate with the, the systems going forward, right? So let's walk this way. From tank one, it moves to the, the other tanks. Yeah. But wait, whatever is happening here beyond this point is tubular. It is going through the tubes, so it is not exposed to, to any human contact. It is just running through the tubes. What happens here is that we expect, because you saw watermelon, yeah. you saw ginger, and you saw pineapple. Yeah. Because today we are doing the watermelon, pineapple, and mm -hmm. ginger mix. Good. So we need to, to turn it well, to stir it. So from this tank, it is moved to these other tanks, these two tanks, which have the stirrers up there. 
just to turn and get a good mixture. But before that, you also don't want to see it sit for some time and separate, like, like juices typically do. So we send it through this other machine, it, it mixes it and blends it such that there will be no separation even after one year. Because you are putting your juice in, a, in an opaque box and you have shake well. But how well people shake, you don't know. So you want to do the right thing here. So we take it through the homogenizer and get a mixture done. From there, it goes to the preheat, which is also about um, 50, 60 degrees Celsius. And then from here, it moves straight into the pasteurizer. Ah, there's something very interesting about the pasteurizer. It does 125 degrees Celsius. That's extremely hot. Yes, extremely. But by the time it leaves here, it is already chilling because there's a chiller embedded on it. So from here, there's still no, no contact, no human contact here. Exactly. It just goes through the tubes, it runs here and straight into filling. So I, I've still not seen the additives. There's no additives so far. I've not seen <laughs> anything like that. No. I, I'm just waiting for him to make that mistake and say that, oh, we dropped a little bit of sugar from this Zero. side. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Oh, we have my. thousands and thousands of acres of sugar loaf and smooth cayenne. We have no business adding one drop of water. Because once you add water, they have to add other things and all of that. Wow. We are committed to providing non-genetically modified juice that has no additive. No concentration? Zero. We don't do concentrate here. You don't have any powder somewhere? No. So you can you cannot look around. We've done the processing. So tell if you can if you can see something somewhere connecting something. <laughs> wow. Next for, step. For for a major producer like this. Mm. If you want to do additive, it cannot be on a spoon. It is quite huge. And you should see something here. Right. It's so, next This room is actually chilled. So these gentlemen you see here are the operators of the machine. They still have no contact with the juice because the juice comes in the tubes and it goes straight into filling. So the, the curtains will go in here, it gets folded and it's filled inside the machine and all you have is the juice coming out. So come see, come see the process. So this is the final juice? Yes. But not final. Not final. Because what you see here is the juice coming from the machine. It is still not finished. Because this is a 250 ml, there's a scissor mark here so you can make an incision and then drink from it. However, it is desirable that you have a straw. So it goes to the next level, which attaches the straw. We can look at it. So what we have from here is what we saw in the, now with the dates, now it has to do the straw attachment. So it goes through this straw attacher, which shoots the straw from this side and automatically attaches to them. So at this point, you are ready for the market. At this point, they are ready for me. Wow. And I can see people are packing it up. Sure. That's awesome, man. How many in these boxes? So there's 24 pieces in a box. This is the final part of the journey we took this morning. Okay. That has taken us all the way to the farm, through harvesting to processing. So it hits up like this, coming out from this shrink wrap machine. So we have your premium juice wow. packed in a, in a package of 24 cut, uh, pieces in a carton. So how many cartons do you guys produce in a day? So in a day, typically we do per single shift, we do about 3,000 of these. Wow. 3,000 cartons of these. 3,000? Yes. So do you have a morning and evening shift? Sure, so a double shift, we do a, we'll do a double of this. So that's the, the production capacity that we have here. And both have different employees? Sure. Wow. So we have one shift coming in the day and another shift coming at night. At night. Now, this is where I mean business. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm on a weight, weight loss journey, yeah? Sure. And I want to know, is this good for me? You know, no additives. 
So this is fruit. This is just fruit you are, you are drinking. Fruit is good for you, this is good for you. So since you don't add any additive, does the lifespan... Okay, so what happens is that we take you through the pasteurizer, the same process that evaporated milk, etc., will go through to stay that long. It's called the pasteurizer, the process of pasteurization. Mm. It's literally like uh, boiling it, but if you boil it, you lose the taste. So we take it through pasteurizing, and it goes through a chiller. And then one thing is that this box that you see is airtight. Okay. So it halts, it halts the life of the juice. Mm. In fact, the moment it is open, and there's infiltration of air, you have to consume it. All right. Otherwise, it will go bad. So the moment you open the box, it begins a new life. Mm. But it is sitting in an airtight four ply container so what you see is four ply wow container or four ply package and it is airtight so, so it has to be kept like this. if you keep it like this for a year you open and it is still fresh the lifespan is one yes, year it's a year i'm seeing like people are loading sure. that's why you take it to them you take it to the market so this is off to the market so we have the trucks coming in here every day to wow. load to the market that's impressive, man. Yes. So the trucks come in every day to load. And we also have the other ones going to uh, the shops in the U.S., for example, to Walmart and all, all the tropical shops in the, in the U.S. And very soon we're going to have this in the Wody Market. Very you soon we're going to have it in Wody Market. But you know what? If you're living in the U.S. and it's environs, please, you know what you need to do? Click on the link in the description, the water market, buy one. I, I wanted to say buy one, get one free. <laughs> but no, just buy one to support this business that is happening in Africa. And I think if somebody buys one, what does it do to the ordinary people living in here? So what you are doing for the people of Ghana, for Africa, and indeed for the people of Ekufi, is that buying a box, right, supports all the people you've seen on the field today, the kind of impact we want to give um, out to the economy of Ghana and indeed the economy of Ekumfi yeah. is that when you, you give that one out, you buy, you empower the, the farmer, you empower the processor, you empower the workers here and everybody to, to begin to do more. That's really incredible. I wanna, before I let you go, if you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? That's exactly what we're, we're trying to change. It has always been our dream to see this narrative change, where we're just taking out raw material, or we are, we are subordinating our, our ideas to, to the, larger, the, the larger thinking that, oh, as for Africa, we can't do anything that's a standard. We say, let's, let's put it to it. When we put it to it, we've been able to develop a product that is, is, is international in nature. It meets all the standards and proudly sits in Walmart. You, can, you, should, you should tell you. The, the standard. And the people that are operating all the machines in here are Ghanaians. So all the machines sitting down here do not belong to any producer. I mean, no producer can say, I set up, they, could be, they just sold components and we put them together. Wow. Right. So for all the components, they, they, the manufacturer will come in to do installation, but that was part of the arrangement. So they do installation, they do training of our local people, so that's what you see here. And then they do test run and leave. That's Before it. the next person comes in, we'll do the same and leave. So by the time we finish the finishing line, there was no expatriate here. And it was run from 20, December of 2019 to this point, only by our guys. Wow. So they've had a chance to learn. So now, if there's a breakdown, we don't have to worry too much. We got their capable hands here. Hmm. So now they have, they have far exceeded what we give them because now they are into, into all the technicalities. Amazing. Yes. I want to say thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video for others to see that there is a juice processing factory right here in Ghana. Thank you all, and I'll see you all in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out.